And welcome Flip Clock fans. You're looking at a box, of course, a box I just got in from a subscriber of the YouTube channel. He wants me to take a look at it. And also I wanted to be able to show you my new knife. But really, a lot of times I'll do this, I'll actually open these boxes up and video the process just to get a record of what's going on. Well, where, where did this come from? It came from Thomas Moore of Peoria, Illinois. And we want to thank Thomas for sending in the clock so we could take a look at the Copal 227. We'll see a little bit more specifically what we're going to look at here. And we're, some of the things are we're going to show you disassembly and give you some ideas on cleaning, but also there's um, Specifically, we're going to look at the light bulb here. So anyway, when I get a clock for the first time and I do this on camera, I'm looking it over really good. You don't want to see if there's any damage. Kind of document that. But let's talk about the 227 in general. The Copal Model 227 showed up in advertisements from about 1972 to 1979. It was really a clock of the 70s for sure. It was a popular clock. It was a nice little compact version of a flip clock. Came in a lot of different varieties. We're gonna show you that in a second. Well, here's the inserts that came with uh, these clocks originally. It didn't come with this clock, but I have this on hand. And I'd like to take a look at this. It's just really interesting. Some interesting information. Pretty basic stuff for those of you familiar with flip clocks. Just curious. Here's the um, warranty card you could fill out. I would imagine that it's not valid anymore. But this is the nice little booklet that I that you may have seen online, and I really like this. This is nice. I ought to get it framed. It's it's really, really awesome. Awesome collection of Copal clocks. And here's our two two seven. They say it came in white, black, red, yellow, and wood grain. I'm gonna go into that a little bit deeper here in a second. Just an awesome conglomeration there. Well, the Copal Model 227 had a lot of color combinations. And we know they had the wood grain. And don't discount this. This was popular in the 70s, wood grain was. Now, they had yellow, but they had the yellow with the white numbers, white uh, tiles, and yellow with the black, the black face. You got red with the white face and red with the black face. Again, white, uh, white numbers on black tiles and black numbers on white tiles with the all-white version. And this just looks like a tuxedo. I want one like that. And the all black, you can't beat that. Very classy. So a wide variety of Copal 227s. And you'll see those online. So again, we're continuing our look at this clock. Giving it a look over. Got a clock that seems to be in pretty good shape, except for some normal wear. Kawasaki. That's just curious. Again, the clock looks really good. Got some wear, um, consistent with use through the 70s. That's just a little smudge, little grease. Looking at the faceplate, really, really good condition, considering. We're gonna make sure everything's slipping right. Looks good. There's how you take it apart. Now, this right here, that's the first sign that somebody's been into the clock. And I like to look at that, see if somebody's been into it. That doesn't look like it's on correctly. It's just turned around the wrong way. I'm going to plug it in and make sure everything's working. And there, the whirly gig, which is often erroneously referred to as a operation indicator. Uh, it's actually a whirly gig. It's working really good. Arms going off just fine. We'll check to make sure that's actually flipping. I usually can look at these tiles and see it creeping along before it goes underneath that resting finger there, or tine as I like to call it. And it's flipping just fine. But it's pretty obvious that there is no neon glow bulb going on there. So to take this clock apart, you've got to start with the knobs. And these are coming off really, really easily. Again, another sign that someone's had this open. When, if you've got a clock that's never been taken apart, even this one here is a struggle to get off. So again, other signs that someone's been in the clock. 
and that's how it's that's how it's supposed to go. Yeah, hey, no big deal. I'm not not putting down Thomas Moore of Peoria, Illinois. He just threw it together. He told me he was going to just put it together and, and get it to me so I could look at it. So there's the screw. You have to get apart to get the case apart. We're going to crack it like a nut. So to get that apart, you're pushing down on the bottom. There's two tabs, one there, one there. And it kind of hinges up. There's tabs on the top, and you don't want to be forcing anything. And again, it came apart pretty easily. On a clock that's never been taken apart, this will take some time. So if you're taking a clock apart, don't get aggressive. Just work it a little bit. It'll actually come apart eventually. There's been no breakage, so whoever's had this apart didn't um, get too aggressive, which is good. Now, that's not right. So pretty clear that that doesn't belong there. We'll go into that a little bit. So obviously, we've had some some alteration here, and that's got to be the light. That's coming off. Yeah, that's the light bulb. So to get this uh, down further, you take the two mechanism screws out. And I like these clocks because it just slides right out. The whole mechanism just wants to come out. It comes out very easily. And obviously we're missing our, our light bulb there. And so at some point someone had something going on there, some situation going on there that was working for them, but not any longer. Good operation. They, they spin in nicely. Nothing needs to be done here. Everything's working correctly, except there's no light. We're going to go into great detail about how I how I replace these bulbs. People have asked me that before, and that's why I want to take this opportunity. This may bore some people uh, if you're good at this or you've done it before, or you may enjoy watching somebody work on a clock. And that's what's going to happen. I'll give you little tips about how to get this apart and how I actually go through the process of replacing this. Now you see these nuts here? Those are the original nuts, and I like to leave them there. They're very, it's a very good uh, connection there. I don't have any means of replacing that. Of course I have the regular screw on nuts, but I don't like messing with that. And the person who fixed this obviously didn't either. They just used the original leads and got it going again. We're gonna look into that and see what they did. So I'm gonna show you also in a bit how to get this apart, get this faceplate off to allow for cleaning. But first we're going to dissect into this um, somebody's work here. And I feel like I'm kind of a kind of invading somebody's privacy here, seeing how they did their work. But that's an important concept. You'll see when I put this together, I also take consideration of that. What would someone think if they opened up my work? Well, you see some shrink tubing here. There's There was some blackened bit of it there, um, not on this one, but on the other one it's blackened a little bit, but I think that's from the flame they were using. So I don't think there was any burnout here. It doesn't look like there, that black part there, that's when somebody was heat, heating it, shrinking it. And what I see here is wire, there's a lead. Okay, there we go. And that's original. This is an original resistor to this clock. And it looks like it broke off right there. So that's why I, I don't like to try to reuse the resistors because the wires will they corrode after a while and you get a, a condition like this. So I like to cut the wire back and replace, replace it with a rebuild assembly. And I'm going to show you how I do that and what you'll need to do that. Now this is another Copal 227. Pretty much the same in all aspects. And we're going to look at how this is done, how their bulb is done here, to get an idea of how to fix our bulb for the, for the other one. And now, curiously, they don't use a Kawasaki. They use a Totoku, which I don't know what that means. Todoku means metropolitan, but I don't know what Totoku means. And Kawasaki, I think that's just somebody's name. Oh, we see the the uh, alarm button is on the way I think it's correct. But who knows? It's correct. So anyway, again, it's the same thing. You take this screw apart and you crack it open like a nut. And just to review, we push down, push down. There's two, and it hinges up. I'm going to get that out of the way.
So I've taken the mechanism screws out and didn't show that, but here we go. This is an original bulb, believe it or not, that's in really good shape. Someone must have had this put up. That, that bulb size there, is, is, I can't find that for sale, but that's the original size. We're going to replace, now look at the tubing here. We're going to replace all that uh, in the model we're working on. But the bulb, I want to show you how to get a comparable bulb, a bulb that actually puts out very good light. Now, as an aside, I'm going to show you how to take this faceplate off. I'm going to do it on this yellow because it's easier to see, I think. Um, and it's going to help with cleaning. You see, there's a little bit of give there, just a little bit. So I'm pushing with my thumb, my right thumb, and I'm using my fingernails, which is the proper tool for this. Trust me, don't, don't stick blades in there and uh, try to, to get it off. So once I do a little push, and then I pry that up, and it, and it should pop off. And you'll see the, the backside here, this thing, it's held in place by the clear face plate. The, you can get it off without taking the clock apart, but you're not going to be able to get it back on because you have to put pressure on it with your fingers and hold that while you snap that in place. So you can get it off with the clock not apart, but you're not going to get it back on. Well, here's our, our mess here. Again, no offense to whoever did this restoration. He probably did a good job at the time. Now here's a C2A. It is a comparable to a any uh, 2H bulb. Now I like this company because they include the bulbs plus the resistors you're going to need. And that's memetronics.com. Now when you're ordering from them, you have to make sure that it actually does come with the resistors. Some of them don't. But they'll usually lead you in the right direction of what size resistor. This happens to be a 30 kilo ohm resistor. Which is the proper resistor for this bulb. And these bulbs all run off of uh, household current. You have to have a resistor, one resistor on one of the leads. Now, if you're going to do this for yourself, you're going to need to get a soldering iron. And I use the heck out of this. And it's, I got this off of Amazon, and it's one that's got some a variable te temperature control, which helps out a lot, and on and off switch. Not an expensive model, but it works really good. And you need some uh, rosin core solder. And you're going to get some good wire. Off of eBay, you can get some military spec wire. This is good stuff. Really good stuff. This is 19 strand copper wires, and the, the wire is actually silver plated copper wire, 19 strands. Good stuff. And that jacket uh, can resist high heat, like 105 degrees Celsius, and it, the wire itself can uh, handle 600 volts. Now, this, I love, this is my go to tool. It's pretty simple. This is a 22 gauge wire, and this is a tool by South Wire. Very simple. I, I can cut with it, and I can strip with it. And it does better than some of my other stuff, my fancier stuff. That's how you strip a wire. Now again, some of the stuff I'm going to show you, a lot of you guys already know how to do. And this will either help you go to sleep tonight as you watch this. And some other people may be learning something, so I hope you bear with me on this. This is going to help the owner of this clock see exactly how his clock was put back together. So. I know at least one person is watching this far into it. Now I'm going to use some of this heat shrink tubing. And it wasn't, this wasn't, they didn't have this back in the day. But I, I really think for safety's sake, I'm going to use this stuff in one little spot. And you'll see, well actually two spots. Now this happens to be a 24 AWG or 24 gauge. But I actually work on a 22 gauge, which is a little bit bigger. AWG is American Wire Gauge, that's all that means. Now the cable sleeving we're going to use is from Dayburn. This is a D105-12. It's a very thin tube. And this stuff is top notch. It'll take high heat and, and high voltage. And it won't burn. It won't catch on fire. This is a D105-4. This is the thicker one. You can find that online, but you have to buy in bulk. So you're not going to be able to buy just a piece of it. About like that piece is how big I'm going to need. So I'm sorry to tell you that, and it's not cheap, but if you're doing this a lot, each piece becomes a reasonable price. Now, you're also going to need something. You don't have to do this, but this really comes in handy. So you see, your immediate outlay is going to cost you a little bit of money, but these things aren't that expensive. And if you're going to do this, you might as well get something good that's going to help you. Helping hands. So I take my neon glow bulb. And I just figure about how far to cut. Now you can just estimate it. You can just see what I'm doing here. 
I've done this many times before, and I just like this size. I've, I've modeled it off of other bulbs I've seen, and I'm going for the look and also for the function. You'll see the way it fits into the clock later, how the, it actually works out really good. So you, you, that's what I'm going to do, overlap it there. The other wire, I, a little bit longer, and again, it's just the way I've seen it done before, and it actually works out really well. So you clamp the bulb there. Those bulbs can handle a lot of pressure, by the way. And then you're going to get your resistor lined up. And I'm going to show you how to solder. Again, apologies to those of you who are experts in this. I want to try to help people out on how to do this. Now you'll hear, you, you don't want to take the solder and melt it onto the wire. You don't do that. You heat up the wires you got it, so they'll take the solder. So you, get, you can tell that's getting hot. Now I will touch the iron. That's one thing they don't tell you to do. I will touch the iron to let, get the, wires, the solder started. But I'm not melting the solder and dripping it on the wire. Now this is called pre-tinning a lead. And tinning meaning soldering. So I'm getting the wire hot and then that, that'll allow that solder to soak right into those strands. I don't really think you need to tin these leads to do this. And the other one I'm not going to. So I've got them lined up. We go ahead and heat up the whole process, get both of those wires warm or hot, and then get the solder and it'll take the solder a lot better. Otherwise, it's not going to take the solder. Oh, perfectionism. It doesn't pay. I just want it to look neat. Okay, so this lead, I did not um, tin it, uh, pre-tin it. And it, it's going to probably work better, probably get a better seal. Same thing, I'm getting the wires hot. But you'll tell that white jacket on that wire isn't drawing back. That's a lot of heat there. So that's good stuff. Uh, lesser wire would, it would draw back and start to melt. It's good stuff. Again, you can get that on eBay. You just gotta look what you're buying for. I don't have any links for it. I bought that a while ago. So that's the situation. That would light up right now, but it's kind of dangerous because that's a 110, 120 volts coming through there. So we gotta protect it. Now, I, don't, I could put uh, black uh, shrink wrap on there, but I like this tube here. It's gonna allow me to see what resistor is on there. It's gonna protect it, and it is very original. Again, it's gonna look nice if someone takes their clock apart. They're gonna see something that looks original. And this tube cuts really easily. The, uh, what lead the resistor goes on does not matter. This is alternating current. It's gonna bounce back and forth. You only put the resistor on one lead. It doesn't have to be near the bulb. It just has to be in the circuit. So that looks really neat, don't it? That's what I think. So you could actually put the thick covering over top of both these and leave that wire exposed because it wouldn't be touching, but for safe, and I've seen that before, but for safety's sake, I put, a, put this over top of it, the shrink wrap. It's just an extra level of safety. Yes, it's not original, but it's safer. I have seen them put some, sometimes they'll put a black sleeve on there, but it's not shrink wrap. It's a, usually a fiberglass uh, tubing. And then when you, when you do heat, uh, heat tubing like this, shrink wrap, you don't want to use the yellow part of the flame. That's what someone else probably did, and that's what makes it black. You use the blue part of the flame. It's a more controlled heat than the yellow. The, it'll work, the tip there, but it'll, it'll leave soot, and it doesn't melt nicely like this. You can use a heat gun or whatever else you want to use. So here's my, my bigger tubing that's going to go over the whole, whole uh, mess there. And, you know, I'm going to guesstimate there about the size to try to kind of match the other clock we saw. Just goes over top of everything, and it overlaps the bulb. But remember, this is high heat tubing, and the bulb don't get that hot anyway. It's a, it's, it's a cold bulb, typically. So you see how that bulb's got a little uh, nipple on the end. It fits in that little hole. It seats that way, and then this is aluminum, and you wrap it down over top of the tubing to hold it in place. And we can see that bulb's going to light up that the digits just fine. So I cut off this mess here, and I leave a, a little bit of wire there, so something to work with in case someone wants to replace that again later. We'll go ahead and solder this to the, the leads before, before I try to get the, the light in place. Uh, permanently. So we've got to 
go ahead and do the same thing. You do want to solder these. You could use uh, wire nuts, but um, it's going to be a better connection and a safer connection if you do this. You'll need some of that shrink wrap to put on this. A couple pieces of that. You want to, don't forget to do that. I've done that before. I forgot to put the tubing on. You're going to have to desolder. It's a mess. So get the tubing on and you want to get it way far back from your soldering because that will shrink on there. And again, another thing I've done in the past. So get way far back out of the way. So it's not going to pick up the heat from your soldering iron. And you don't end up shrink wrapping it, causing yourself some grief. Of course, the same principles are in play here. Now, it doesn't matter the color here. But I just, just that perfectionist side of me, just, it's going to be the light. I'm just going to try to make it look the same. That's kind of a gray wire. And it could be any color wire. But you want the gauge to be about the same. We're going to end up having this thing look pretty good. Like I said, once we get done, it'll look professional. It'll look like it was someone took the time to do it correctly. So I'm just kind of wrapping it on there. It's going to be easier if I can get it kind of twisted together like that before I go ahead and solder it. Now take care when you're soldering around the clock itself. You could drip. This, this is a, uh, that's just a tip cleaner. It just cleans some of the solder off. It makes it a little easier. But you got to be really careful when you're soldering near your clock. You could drip that onto the tile. You could drip it someplace. And you really can't go back. And also, the iron is hot. And if you touch some of the wires in there, you are going to mess something up. So same thing. Heat the wire up. And then you... Put the solder on there. Pretty straightforward at this point. So you see where I'm going with it. So we've got both soldered. We'll push the tubes down over top of that. And then shrink it. And that's not going to go anywhere. So we don't have to worry about that now. So we'll get the final fitting of the tube of the um, light assembly. You know, crimp that down over the tube really tight. I want to, I want to get it all secured in there so it doesn't come loose in shipping. And make, and then we're gonna, as we recall, this is how it went, how it was uh, oriented. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put a, a zip tie in there to keep everything nice and compact, so it'll go in easier into the cabinet when we do that. It looks pretty good and it's gonna work great. So that that's the process, and it does take a while. To, to do that for just this one clock. Of course, you know I've shortened the video considerably just to show you what I've done so far. So it takes some, some time to do that. So this is the first time I've turned it on. I know it's going to work, but this is just to check for, to see the alignment of the light, where it's going to hit the tiles. And I want the major glow of the light to be like right in the middle. And that's right. That's right where I want it. So it's a nice little replacement bulb. It's a high-intensity bulb. The NE2, NE2H or the C2A is made for things like this. Things that, that you want to see the light and get, get it some good glow with it. And I like the original. People say, what about an LED? I said, you can do that if you like. It's your clock. You can do what you want. But I want it original. And it's a, a, the glow bulb gives it that retro look. You can see the nuts there. Uh, everything's kind of as original as I can get it. It looks good. We've got it together. Got the light in place. The clock's running great. Got a nice glow to it. It's back in, back in business. So there it is. I hope this has helped someone. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for taking the time.